Hello everyone, welcome to another day in Shroud of the Avatar. Today I just decided to start or work on a new character, even though we've been using them a little bit before, Darth Vader. And I've decided that I'm going to use Hullab training on him. So I've done bows, I've done swords, dual swords. So I thought we'd look at the halibut tree, so that's what I'm going to use. He's pretty much fresh out of the box. So, as you can see, he's ready and raring to go. I've done a bit of basic training with him. So, so that's what friends request up here, so... Oh, guts. No guts, welcome to my list. And so, um, now I do accept all friend, friend requests, uh, mostly because you can use your teleport scrolls and your recall scrolls to get around the map. I'm just going to put them down here. So, it means that if you've got friends, it means that you can uh, write one that's that one there already. Sorry, so at the moment these friends are actually online and I could teleport to them. So Exeter, for instance, is right at the other end of the world. So there are some people already in our head which have just accepted. So that's why I take all friends' requests. So it means if you want to get from one end of the map to the other, you can do so just by using the scroll. Now, this character has also just got this basic wear on him. So the only thing that I have done is given him a crafted halibut plus one, which Scarface made, and a backpack, which is something to manage our inventory when we need to do so. It also gives us a slight dodge multiplier. All the other equipment at the moment is all the stuff you get when you join the game, so we've got to look at improving that. But the first thing we need to improve is our halibut skill. Now I've got this up and track just been out doing a bit of playing, getting some of the skills up a little bit, like getting the health and some of the strength skills up. And so what we need to do is we need to come and see use Mervin here, the skill trainer. So we're going to be using the halibut range and push, we've got puncture and we've got the reach. Increases the range of pole arm, so um, each of these and we'll add them into our deck. those three skills on so I can start to train them up. Just bring up our deck, which I have made it a mixed deck. So what we need to do is add in our push, add in our puncture in there. And then we're going to take out two things. Seeing that we're not losing that much, or we don't need that many of them. Put in those. Let's take out the strength of the birds. And carry. And can I take out the glancing blow? No, right. Carry back in. And the reason why I've had to do that is because if you're there, I've got to have 14 glyphs in this deck as a mixed deck. So it means that I've got one slug if I don't, so it means I've got to put something else in so that you have a full deck. Now your deck slowly increases as you improve. So I normally keep a light and a health one on there. 
so now we're going to form that. We should have our deck built. We don't have many glyphs, but the good thing is you can use you can stack these together. You know, and then you can cast them on. So you can slowly build up the deck with more powerful abilities. Right, so let's just see how much gold we've got in this character. Okay. Let's go and see how much some basic... I'm going to use plate armor on this character. Now, with your armor sets, there are a few different types of armor. You have cloth, chain, leather, and plate armor. Now if you want to do magic, you have to wear cloth armor, because that has a positive effect against all fizzle chance, and fizzle is the chance of a spell failing. And something with escapes. Oops. A bug. That's definitely a bug. Okay. That gate's broken. I suppose to want to send that. So there's another entrance up here. And now there's some sheep up here. Lots of sheep. Interesting. Learn something new every day. Loads of sheep over here. Alright, let's go and use this gate. The shop where we need to come into is in the upper market. There's a blacksmith up here. We can send, but we can just get some uh, basic armor. Now that's the trainer in that one. There's actually two. This one is the seller, and the other one is the, the trainer in. You see it? And there's the filter plate. Right, so we've got the armor. Maybe the border. The border set actually. That's a good basic set. And the reason why you want to get the set is so that you can um do unjust enough money. if you have the set on you when you equip your armor, it gives you a slight extra bonus. Some boots on you, some chest and plate on you, some gauntlets, a helmet, a game with plate helm, and leggings. Now these what you can't sell because they have a zero level. So you can scrap them. Or you, uh, you can actually throw them away or you can actually scrap them for, for cloth, cloth scraps which you can then sell. Now if, because we're wearing a complete set of armour, it means that we also get an extra bonus which is damage resistance but if you look at the bottom in the red you can see the fizzle chance the plate is the worst to wear for using magic now plus six means it adds six to the chance of fizzle and fizzle is the chance of a spell failing so as you can see we've got six there we've got 28 there 6 there, 
got 14 there. We've got another 6 there. So we've got very little chance, if any, of doing any magic in plate armor. But it does have higher damage resistances. And as you get specialized armor, it also carries a lot of other resistances. It really depends on what type of play you want to play with. Now, chain sits, chain and leather sit in the middle where cloth is the best for magic, plate is the worst for magic, and basically you've got cloth and leather, sorry, leather and chain mail sitting in the middle of the two. They all have their benefits and disadvantages. It's working out the best for your style of play. And we've got our can see the gateway from this side. We've got a few people trying the gate, looks like this gate is broken. <laughs> oh big run through. I think somebody's playing around with the gate which is stopping other people from playing with it. That's my assumption. Let me just check something. I don't know if anybody is invisible. But there's definitely something happening there. Anyway, on with the game. Let's say this is Al's head in the game. It's a reasonable trading post in the game, one of the first trading posts. Loads of cheap in it, we just found out. Nice cow, like a butcher cow. Chickens. If you want to kill them, you can get some feathers off them for making arrows. As well as all the meats on of all of them, if you train those up. Across the bridge, you can see all the player owned traders up here as well. They're pretty plots. I'm surprised somebody hasn't introduced a tavern in, in the beginning area yet. I thought this one might have been a tavern, which is a new type of housing in the game to allow people just to rent out rooms instead of another way of owning a, owning a room in the game instead of owning a house. So let's go up into the overworld. And here we are. Just on the overall. Now seems we're a starting character, we're just gonna go for a level one skull instant, so seems this is the first one we come up to, north of Railway, and we'll use that one. Now whilst this scene's loading, I thought I'd just show you my pages. So we have my YouTube page here, which if you um click on the subscribe button actually get to know when more of my content comes out on the Facebook page you can actually just click the like button and then also if you'd like to buy the game or any of the add-ons you can click on the link in the description you can go to Market Dragons Game Store and buy the game from there or any add-ons and if you do that you'll be helping me out with a small amount of commission now uh, so just come up to the game and just been attacked by a spider so, start getting up. So now I'm starting to level up on some of these skills. Pin those to the top. Unpin those at the moment. Pinning them keeps them in play. So you only have so many that you can have and then they'll drop off. So these are the main ones we're going to look at. Skin Mr. Spider. 
say because you're getting 10,000 XP points each day, it means you should level a lot faster. The more you've got pulled is 73,000, the more you have in the pool, the quicker you actually level up. So, by having 10,000 added in our pool, it means we can start to use new characters will level up rather quicker. I don't know how long they'll keep on doing that for. There's somebody else in the same. Sorry, on oh, that. No. no. I thought I would expect to be attacked a bit more. And the halibut is that actually a benefit for range. Open and we're not going to get much of a benefit for attacking these creatures, but if you come up against characters that have shields, the whole arm will get through the shield. Seems it has a larger range, it can hit a lot more targets at the same time. Dark, let's bring up a bit of light. Glitching again means that sometimes the light spell isn't working, well, isn't displaying, it's actually working. So it shows us the buff up there. Nicely killed for us. Get harvest salt ash. Something else that I've done as a new player is I'm only carrying the tools that are absolutely necessary. Again, there's another bug in the game which is not showing us our tools, which is a problem. I'm only carrying the harvesting tools, which is the pickaxe, the what else we got? The skinny knife and the axe. I think that's all. And the reason why I've done that is it cuts down on our weight so we can carry, slowly carry more. Is that as we train the strength, we'll be able to carry more. But at the beginning of the game, you can't carry much. Over here, some sort of skeletons up here. I'm starting the error up there. Oh, there's some. I'm going to attack the bear. Look. Carcass over here, while I stay fine. See you wings, two skeletons, or one bear. Give back the salt. Looks like bears got the edge on them. Yep, looks like bears. Oh no, I don't know. Let's see what Is they do give you gold rewards as well as a, a weapon to sell or scrap. And we can see we can pick on a few more. I don't really pick them all up, so let's slowly move through here. Come on, wake up wherever you are. Okay. 
couple. The others coming in now, but we should be not sure a lot of things. Not our health. And we'll hit them properly, so we'll just change our location. Because if you're uncertain, do you think it's best just to move a little bit? Okay. Right into the subject. Let's take them out. And at the moment, I'm not carrying any extra food buff. I've chosen blessing, blessing courage, courage, and blessing of honesty. Get some extra five extra strength and focus. And it seems the character's rather low. I've not taken on any food. He's not yet ready. Okay, let's head over here. Plus four on that one. Plus four on that one, which are now the new skills we're trained in. Let's just bring those up the top. To know when these get to level 40. Is that a mind load? It's a new one for me to learn. A bit of iron. Resources in this particular map is not that fantastic. A good place to come and get some skeletons. Uh, the main thing of the skeletons is corp corpse wax, which is relatively valuable. Of course, you get the weapon, and of course, you get some. Some bounty off them, which is the best way to explain it. Right, no more spawn, so let's go over the other side. It's just become a knight in the game, there's another skeleton, not oh, being killed, so it's like a bear killed him. tells you how many cards you've got available in your deck by the times number. It's level 26. We will have to, an extra three tiles, so I'd rather get some more of those for the deck. Oh, uh, the light tile went for some reason. Some magic. There we go. I don't know why that went, but not to worry. Good. 
bit cotton. Another bit. So learning as we go. I've not ever played anything with the halibut before, so we're on a journey together. Let's get at least a bit. At the moment, we're we're only going to get animal hides out of the bear. If we go and learn about, it, if we go and train up on the carcasses. And it means you get a chance to get in the carcass and then you get a chance to butcher that second carcass. Bad carcasses or carcasses in general will turn into meat at the butchery station. If you have the ability with skill. Just chop away with our axe. Back here, as well as some bells. trees and the other commodities normally follow. The trees are easy to find, especially at night time. in the game, but I do love running away from you. This when I've got my bow on me, they don't stand a chance. Take on this to bear. Yeah. Size a little bit more on those ones because they're going to be fixed tiles. That means we can put a bit more training in them when they come up. Get 
to the leg up training to get an extra couple of cards in or tiles, whatever you wish to call them some people call them cards, some people call them tiles this spider over here is probably going to interrupt us yeah, I'm just going to move away from the tree to make it a bit easier to things to sell. I believe venom sacks are used to make poison in the game. You can poison tip. I don't know if you can poison tip hello, but you can swords and daggers I think. Well, the graphic in the game it shows a web here spanned across now in the air. Wabbit. Skinny Mr. Wabbit. How much weight have we got on us? 100 of 136, or 101 now. Let's see, some more skeletons, some more jetpacks. Do they spiders on the way? use the heat system in the game, which is a uh, thing that's added to the game on the fixed deck. You can cast it as many times as you have tiles at a slight extra cost of... It costs more XP to do it that way than having a you know, mixed deck. The reason why I've got them in the fixed deck is because I want to use them as quickly as possible so I can train up on them. And they're in a mixed deck, it's a random effect that happens. Another one here come up. Another one. So now we can cast it twice. Which I can see. Open okay, some more. Just see your buddies die. Roger. They are the undead, aren't they? So. Okay, more. Should have quite a few more, I would have thought. And there's another two. Yeah, it's going to see if the night shade is ready. Nope, still not ready. Unusual. Let's see if there's any up here. Some we've got pretty much all of our loot. Let's go and dispose, sell some some items I'm keeping for the my household of three characters. 
So I'm keeping all of the ore and the trees. Oh, I'll try over there on our way out. So I'm keeping them for the main character. Star face to use for crafting. Right, here we are in the overworld, and we're actually going to head into Owl's Head. We're going to head up into, oh, we're now over encumbered. Well, it could be that can't use them in the overworld. That's probably what it is. Right, we're going to go into Kingsport because everything's just closer together. Over encumbrance slows your walking rate and a few other combat effects as well. Let's see what we get from our loot. After we go to the bank and drop off what we're not going to sell. See we're over encumbered again. That's our movement rate is down by 4.9. That will soon be resolved. So, I'm keeping the carcasses and I'm keeping the corner and the mantle and the boards, chicken carcasses. Traders in this town are um, back down here. Uh, it's pretty much just got very low level items. This is a, a tailor in the game, so you can buy all your tailoring and recipes that you can sell everything to him as well. Now, some traders will give you better prices, but this point in your characters. Progression doesn't do matter. So, so we've got a thousand gold. In this video here. So that's day one of our Halibut training. So, and if you are new to the channel, you can click on the subscribe button and you can get to know when more of my content comes out. Please do feel free to leave any comments in the comments section and I will get back to you. And thanks for watching.